Well, a very good morning to you all. And it's a huge, huge privilege for me to speak here today. So much to say and so little time to say it in, but I will do my, my best. Um, 2018, I feel, was a year of many warm words. And for me, as a farmer first, what I want to see now is leadership and action. One of the things that I'm proudest of is my role in chairing the Farming Organisations Group, working very closely with the CLA, the TFA, and others, and also the very special relationship with the farming unions. There would not be a paper between Ivor Ferguson, president of the Ulster Farmers Union, Andrew McCormick, president of the Scottish Farming Union, and John Davis, president of NFU Cymru. And that, I believe, is critically important for British agriculture and the future. And it is probably best summed up by three words. This is about risk, it's about opportunity, and most of all, it's about change. We face three seismic pieces of change in legislation with a trade bill, an immigration bill, and an agricultural bill. We believe passionately that the agricultural bill must be an agricultural bill for agricultural purposes. And I'm going to come on in a minute to my thoughts on the standards piece. With Brexit and the day job, it would be easy for the NFU to be subsumed by day-to-day -day events. I hope I've been very clear from day one that now is the time to set out a plan for the future. We published our first ever environment report in December, and I passionately believe that the case for farming has to be made through the lens of the environment and the lens of food. Now, with 60% of the food eaten in this country, produced in this country, there has never been a more important time to have a joined up food strategy. And I'm delighted that the Secretary of State has committed to this, and I'm delighted to see Henry Dimbleby here today. And I want to talk to you today about resetting the pride and values in British food, making sure that every penny spent on British food builds a better Britain and a better world. The NFU is hosting a series of roundtable discussions to build an industry-owned comprehensive food strategy. For too long, we've reacted to government. Now is the time to be forwards thinking and shape the future. As farmers and growers, we are connected to every single citizen through the food that they eat. And it is timely with a country that is so divided that we have called this strategy United by Food. There are four key work streams. Firstly, the moral imperative. Do we need to produce food in the UK? I remember coming here when Margaret Beckett spoke in 2003, and she made the comment that the UK is a wealthy nation and therefore could import its food. Those words have stayed with me, and I have to say haunted me ever since. And let me make it clear at Oxford in 2019, if we ever turn the food production tap off, we will massively struggle to ever turn it back on again. Only 37% of the world is farmland. And here we are, the UK in northwestern Europe, as a jewel in the world's crown for producing food. Indeed, if technology hadn't progressed, we would now need the equivalent of three Earths to feed the population. Every year, another 67 million mouths to feed. The second point, and this is something that we have not been engaged in in the past, health and nutrition. There are no bad foods. There are many bad diets. Food has been undervalued for far too long. Currently, a third of children are clinically obese and two-thirds of adults clinically obese. We are what we eat, and we simply have to build a closer relationship between the food producer and the consumer. We will never value the planet we inhabit if we don't value the food we're eating. 
I remember Clive Black saying to me a while back, 50% of people in Britain have got a really tough gig. Austerity is biting and diets are suffering. Banning, taxing, there is much more to this. This is about working with a joined up government, reconnecting the nation with its food. But this is about all of us playing our part. And I will challenge the media here today because you have a role to play. Every news outlet has an environment correspondent. What about food? All too often, it's left to the weekend supplements and goes unheard in the environmental debate. The third point is integrity and standards. We've seen a meteoric journey in the last 20 years in food standards with Farm Assurance, Red Tractor, RSPCA, Leaf, Organic. The UK is the third in global food security index accounting for availability, quality and safety. And the union flag has become a lightning rod of confidence telling consumers that the job is done right. We need to have zero tolerance on food fraud and adulteration. And I'd like now to make reference to what Dame Sally Davis, the Chief Medical Officer, said at the World Health Innovation Conference in Doha. And this is the point I made to John Humphreys on the Today programme this morning. We've talked about chlorinated chicken. It's not about chlorinated chicken. It's about food standards. It's about making sure that the standards across the rest of the world, the food that comes onto our marketplace, are the same as British farmers produce to here. And the antibiotic one that she referred to is a really good example. Now, David Cameron set out the ambition to be a global leader in AMR and responsible use of antibiotics. And we, as British farmers, have risen to that challenge. If we look at poultry, we are currently now down to 17 mg per kilogram. We lead the world in responsible use of antibiotics. So when I talk about the standards being enshrined in law, I mean it. We should be a global leader. Michael Gove has used a series of warm words, which I really appreciate. But I want to see this in writing. If you believe it, write it, legislate it. The final point I'd like to make is about respecting our environment and tackling climate change. And who here is fed up of hearing UK farming subjected to lazy reporting that scribes local performance locally? Now, where do we sit in the world currently? The FAO estimates that UK beef production is 2.5 times more efficient than the world average. And compared with South America, four times more efficient. Now, competitors in our market, from Ireland to New Zealand, have laid down the gauntlet, and I am here to pick it up today. I believe we can match and beat their lead. Our aim must be ambitious, to get our industry to net zero across all greenhouse gas inventories by 2040 or before. The food strategy will be far-reaching and its strength will be that it aims to provide a plan and a way forwards that farmers, environmentalists, the supply chain, stakeholders and politicians can buy into. We will aim to publish the report in April this year. One of the most important things that I believe our Secretary of State can do is to be the brand ambassador for British food. I've listened to great speeches at this conference by big exporting nations. They are passionate about their country, about the standards of production of their country. We have one of the most prized markets on the planet. And in conclusion, I have no doubt that the prize is there, a sustainable, competitive and profitable farming sector that's fit for this century and not last. Thank you for listening.